Jerry. Gr glad to be here. Glad you're here with us today and on Behind the Braves. All right, thank you, Greg. This, Appreciate it. You were in the Alumni Lounge. I assume this is probably the first time you've been here. It is. It was the first time I walked through and uh, saw the, the Hall of Fame out there, yeah. uh, some of the cool water, watercolors on the wall. It's beautiful back here. Yeah, this is really nice. I know as a player, I couldn't, I didn't realize how many people work behind the scenes when I was with uh, with the Braves and all the stuff that goes on. And so I'm sure as a player, you don't get a chance to see uh, everything, but it's nice to bring you to a new place of the ballpark. You are you are you are an official alumni, so that's good. So uh, after your playing days, you'll be welcomed back and you can visit the alumni lounge and do all the things that we've got going on here. That sounds great. I might have to just come in and sit in the same seat <laughs> that's and just force my way in. Yeah, <laughs> well, we have about 250 alumni that are involved with us. There's 65 here locally. And we've got a really good um, participation from all the guys. And we were just here. Did you get to see the guys here from Alumni Weekend? I did. I got to see quite a few, uh, quite a few players that, that I've seen and watched play in the past and, and admired from afar. And it was nice to, to talk shop a little bit with, with some, yeah. some legends. Yeah, any guys that you, when you were a kid, you were like, man, I'd love to meet that guy or I'd love to pitch like that guy. I know I mean, that they said you're a Jose Canseco fan. I grew up an A's fan. I grew up in Ohio, but uh, an A's fan. Uh, and I'm a left-handed pitcher, so you know I get to see Tom Glavin critique me for, for, for a living. So I'm like, yeah. hey man, any advice? You know, we, we break it down. So it's been... Yeah. It's been a blessing to be a part of this organization, and and like you said, with the alumni, they're they're close ties with with this, their players from the past. Um, it makes it easier for us to be on the field, knowing that that they care about us now and even when we're done playing. Well, I think there were a lot of people who were Bob Welch fans, Carney Lansford, Jose Canseco, Dave Henderson. Um, I, I watched those. 1988 World Series was one of my favorites. Dodgers and A's. Um, that was uh, Dodgers and A's, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Carl that Gibson was, home yeah, run. Yeah, I remember yeah. being instructional the, ball. <laughs> I was an instructional okay. ball watching Hershazer just deal and thinking, man, you know, of course, dreaming of being in the big leagues and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, those were some great, uh, great battles during that series. In, in Instructs, you you never feel further away from the big leagues <laughs> yeah, during, right. <laughs> during that right. time. That's a, that's a, that's a, were you in Arizona in Instructs? Actually, I was in Florida? Baseball City, which were the Royals at the time. Okay. And I was with the Indians. That's who I got drafted by. And um, so we were down there splitting it with, of course, you know, you're coming off of I was in I was short I was an A ball uh, just coming off as a, coming out of University of Tennessee and and uh, yeah you're right they just you're you're the low man on the totem pole and they they let you know that right yeah they, <laughs> you feel like the if you think of minor league baseball as like a ladder well, we're not even to the ladder yet at that point we're just looking up <laughs> at the ladder so. that's right <laughs> I remember sitting in Hooters with some of the guys eating wings and we're watching the game I'm thinking God can I ever pitch there. Those guys just seem like monsters. I mean, you think about Jose Canseco, Dave Henderson, uh, Carney Lansford just looked like a, a, you know, a wildebeest. I mean, he was just a real man. I mean, he was huge. And especially on solid. TV, everybody looks Correct. bigger. But those guys, I don't know what if they were doing anything, but uh, that they were he's still they were some big boys. He's still pretty stout, Carney. Um, I have a chance to play with. Uh, both of his sons that played in the A's organization when I was over there. Oh, nice. So I got to see a lot. He'd come over as a fan too. And he was doing some TV stuff on field on and off while I was okay. in Oakland. So yeah, yeah well, he still he still looks the wildebeest part. Like he, he looks like he can move a truck without yeah. starting the engine. I bet. They had some, it kind of reminded me of some of the Phillies teams. They were just like, those guys are big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, we were talking about Ronnie before we, we started. Mm -hmm. You're not going to want to throw him high and tight. Anybody on those those That's 88 right. team uh, with Oakland, because they'll, they'll come after you. Well, I was surprised. I was kind of throwing some bets down, wondering if we were going to drill the first guy uh, yesterday after, you know, we've had our share of incidents with the Marlins, and, of course, they've hit, you know, Ron Ronald twice, and, and I'm just thinking, well, I wouldn't put it past that maybe, you know, Julio's going to go out there and just send a message I don't know, did we get a warning before the game? Uh, yeah, so they just kind of, they didn't warn us before the game, but they extended it that they're paying attention. Uh, so if okay. anything would have happened, it probably would have been okay. a fine sent down. I think Julio and myself would leave it to the guys that throw a little harder to send a little bit more of a message. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. some guys that that's can throw. Right. Can, well, can I throw. said that because I don't know if I would want to be that pitcher that had to send a message and I was pitching against the A's. Yeah, right? that's, that's, that's <laughs> the key. At that point in time and knowing that I had to knock down somebody. Well, but. Julio pitched, what, seven, seven 
seven shutout innings, oh. win the game five nothing. That's about as good a payback. As that's you good, get. but you know, back I in know, the day, we we closed the game. I was trying to be that guy, but even I'm like, yeah, but still, I'm with you. I like for me. I don't want to. I don't want to hurt anybody. You know, if we have to protect a player, especially, you know, they hit Hechevarria as well. I don't think either one were on purpose, but it's not for us to determine. Um, but we just wanted to you know, beat them on the field and right. put a win in the. Ultimately, in the w. that's the best way to yep, do it. Right? Absolutely, that's how I feel. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, um, I, I was excited when I started to read a little bit more about you, just because we had so much in common. You were born in God's country. I was too, up in Tennessee. I didn't know y'all were born in Virginia. Yeah, no, no, it's Tennessee. <laughs> uh, I'm from Knoxville, and and so, uh, but I'm I'm an A's alumni. I'm a Mets alumni and a Braves alumni, and uh, being a relief pitcher myself. So I thought, oh, this would be fun. We can talk about pitching. Ricky's like, oh, well, I guess I'm. <laughs> no, no, I'm just gonna sit back. Me. I'm gonna sit back and smile. <laughs> it and is. Give a thumbs up. It is quite the history to ha- kind of have in common. If you would have grown up in Ohio, it might have been a little too eerie. I don't think we could have That's crossed right. paths. I think I would have been right. like, oh, let's keep our distance. Well, I pitched like a lefty because I threw screwballs. I threw changeups. So Bobby always used me against the lefties as much or more than the righties. I was a setup guy and. And uh, but I, I was looking back at your your career so far. You've had an unbelievable career. Thank you. Thirteen seasons now, and I mean you've got thirty wins. You've got more strikeouts than innings. You've got less hits than innings. You're you're not quite three to one walks to you know to strikeout ratio, but but pretty close. I mean you've just done everything. Being a lefty specialist, you could. I mean I remember some of those guys like Rick Honeycutt and and uh, a few others that pitched forever because. They went out there and they could pitch every day. They could get the lefties out, and they just did everything right. So, do you feel like that um, you feel and have the desire to just keep playing and 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 assuming the role that you're you're maintaining right now? Yeah, I'm, uh, it's something that I'll have to reevaluate in the off season. Uh, it's things change now that I'm I'm married. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just had our first child uh, last year during the season, so he's a little bit over older than one now, and we have another one coming up too at the end of October. So at this point, it really is. I, I didn't want to have kids really early because being a baseball player, you're away so long. I wanted to be a part of that, the youth experience, and you know, be a, be a part of his life. And now, at the end of my career, now that he's won, I'm like, do I want to play long enough to where he's going to have memories in the game? Uh, so it's kind of, you know, will, will my body hold up? Is it right for our family? And can I still be effective? Um, right now, I feel great. I feel like uh, I can contribute to the team. Um, and I, I love my role. Uh, like you said, it's, it's kind of evolved. I wasn't always a lefty specialist. Um, I was a one inning guy, maybe a one plus at times. It really kind of solidified when I came to the Mets in 2015. They were like, this is what we want you to do. We want you to get the lefties out in a situation, usually with runners on base. And so I really focused on that. And in that aspect, my like strikeout to walk ratio you talked about being not quite three to one. You know, And when you're facing the lefties, you kind of have to pick your poison. You know, I'll get a lefty out, and then I have a righty up with a lefty on deck. Right. You know, I'm going to pitch him sure. a little more careful, knowing that that my uh, advantage would be to the guy on deck. And so, you know, you you kind of pitch around guys and and you know, target who you want who you want to attack. Yeah, and that's a great point. And I know back 20 years ago, 15 years ago, that meant more than it does today. The strikeout means more than necessarily the walk because we're seeing a lot more walks and I don't know how much they really, from an analytic standpoint, they focus on three to one walk ratio. But when you look at your body of work, there's so many positive signs in there that you're doing your job and doing it well and that you you can play as long as you want. Now, Thank do you, you feel like you have a rubber arm? Um, not always, but I, I, I'm pretty durable. You know, I'm available to throw, especially in those those limited roles where if I come in and face one guy, maybe two, I can probably do that nine out of ten days. Yeah. Um, fortunately, we have an amazing, uh, talented group here. You know, there's a ton of guys in AAA that are great. So I haven't been asked to do too much, um, but they're awesome here. But I do feel like I can I can contribute. You know, you know, basically every day, and I'm available every day. Um, it just turns out that, that they don't need me, so all That's the better. <laughs> I, I've, Greg and I have been doing Behind the Braves for almost a year now, and I hesitate to say this, but I never get tired of listening to him talk about pitching. It's always fascinating me. I love listening to him break down current things that are going on and comparing them to his, his time. And 
with him being a relief pitcher, I've asked him and talked to him about this, and I wanted to ask you, what is that like? How do you stay mentally prepared for such a, a volatile role? And I mean volatile in that you might pitch three days in a row. You might not pitch for a week. You might come in like you did, uh, I think it was last week, and close the game. I mean, uh, how do you stay mentally ready for that? It seems like, to me, as just a, from a fan perspective, that seems like the hardest job in baseball, being a reliever. Well, thank you, Ricky. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You should, you should tell <laughs> Anthopolis that. No, uh, <laughs> well, we'll we will. Play this we will. We'll <laughs> for, me, for me, being a reliever, uh, is easier preparation wise for a sense that I know I have a chance of being in there the next day. Um, from a mental standpoint, you talked about how well Julio pitched yesterday, seven shutout innings. Well, the five days before that, he had a struggle. I think he got four outs, is that right? Or something like you know, that. Under yeah. two innings. And for him to have to sit on that for five days and still go out and be effective, what I loved as a reliever is almost like we're position players. We have to lace our cleats up every day with a chance to play. And so it kept me out of trouble because I, you know, I couldn't go out to bars, you know, I couldn't, you know, go chase the nightlife because I have a job to do. I gotta be ready every day. And so I was like, all right, if my body physically needs to be prepared I need to be mentally prepared to, to play every day and so that was an easy you know conversion for me as a professional did, did you ever get the nickname Dr. Blevins? Uh, never. I want to call him Dr. Blevins for some reason. <laughs> well, I don't as know. A, I, just, a, I don't as know. As a college dropout, you know, drafted oh, really? as a junior. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we yeah, were all I'll that, right? Okay. It might be an honor. No, I want to call you Dr. Blevins, but what, what, is, what do they call you? What's your nickname? Blev. They call me Jerry. Um, I get a little bit of everything. Your Players Weekend jersey, which Players Weekend is coming up as we're recording this, his Players Weekend jersey, oh, yeah. Greg, it's, 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 it's the list I saw is Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Is that right? Yeah, is it still? yeah. Okay. I mean, I grew up in right in the Jerry Springer era yeah, on same. TV, oh, so yeah. the, the Jerry chance, uh-huh. uh, and it's okay. just uh, an excuse for me to try to get some fans to yell my name <laughs> <laughs> instead of uh, "Hey, give me a ball" or "Hey, go get go get Acuna or Josh Donaldson to come out." Hey, can you get Ronald to sign this? <laughs> yeah, I used to do that. I'm like, I don't have that kind of sway, yeah. guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. Will this one do? Mine was, "Hey, can Smol- Can you get Smolty to sign this for me?" <laughs> <laughs> like, "Hey, thanks for your autograph. Can you save room for the the good players?" That's so, right. Yeah, no problem. I'll sign real small for you. Oh, my gosh. Well, how did you, growing up in, born in Tennessee, growing up in Ohio, how did the the athletics fandom develop? Was it just that team? No, well, kind of. Um, I have a brother who's four years older than me, and we grew up super competitive. Uh, He's ten times the athlete I, I am still to this day. But he always pushed me. And sometimes you clash, you know, that's how brothers do, even, you know, siblings. And it was the 90 World Series, and he's a huge Reds fan. And I was like, I like that team with the hair and the mustache and the muscles. So it happened to be the A's, and I I loved, I kind of always had a, I've always loved the, the, like the, I guess the the blue collar, you know, kind of hardworking, hard-nosed, Teams and you know when I was in the Bay Area, it was the A's looking over at the the shining gem of the Giants. You know I played for the Mets and we're looking at the Bronx and you've got the Yankees. Um, the Dodgers were the pretty boys. The Dodgers are the pretty boys. So I've always had you know I've always enjoyed you know the kind of the rough and tumble group and and the A's embodied that when I was you know at a very vulnerable time, seven years old, and uh, it just kind of took off from there. Yeah, no no aspirations or dreams of being an Indian. I mean, there was Being a few. Right there. Yeah, I, I really do. My mom would have loved it. She's a, she's a huge Indians fan. Like I said, my brother's a Reds fan. We're surrounded. I live like an hour south of Detroit, so there's a ton of Tigers oh, fans. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, I never got close. I was almost an Indian one off season, um, but they chose a different guy instead of me. And you know, I'm just happy to to be on a really competitive team in a, in a wonderful city and a beautiful ballpark, man. Hey, there's nothing wrong with first place, right? Absolutely. Yeah, this what? has been a, this has been, you know, I started this year at AAA. Yeah. And so to come here and in this situation. Did you get hurt or was no, it? No, I just, you know, I, I signed in the off season with the A's with, with full anticipation of making that team. And then we played in Japan to start the year. So everything was accelerated in camp and they had decisions to make and I just didn't make the cut there. And so I started my year in AAA and I had an out coming up and they still weren't ready to call me up. So I was like, hey, I'm going to take my out. I have nothing but respect for the A's. You know, they gave me my chance. Um, and they said, you know, the Braves are interested and we, we want to give you a shot. So I came here and I honestly, 
Like it's such a blessing. I, I come to the ballpark every day. We've got an amazingly talented group. First of all, I mean, first place. But our guys are fun to be around. You know, I've got That's some great. some familiar faces with with Donaldson, um, Swarzak. I played with. We and and. It's just a fun team to be around, and, and uh, I'm thankful every day. Yeah, it seems we've had the, from current coaches and guys that we've had on, I know every player in every interview, they're going to say, well, yeah, chemistry in the clubhouse is great and everything. But with this group and this team, whenever I hear you guys talk like that, it seems very genuine, and you can tell that it's it's – Team chemistry is a real thing. I mean, I know we all care about the numbers and stats, but how? I mean, it, the chemistry is just as important as all that, as all that correct? Ab- absolutely. It's one of those things where, you know, a thing like when when Ronnie got taken out of the game for not hustling, you know, it was one of those things where he got taken out of a game, but we're there. We want him on our team. We, we want to pick him up. We feel bad for him. We understand that there's a lesson to be learned. You have to, you know, it's something that needs to be done. But at the same time, we're there to pick him up. You know, we won that game. It was a close game. Ortega came and uh, had a, an amazing home run, you know, to, to win it for us. But those are the moments, those are character builders, and we want him to feel like he. we want him a part of the team. We don't want to just discipline him and make him stand on the sideline. We'd be like, hey, we need you. Let's get you, let's get you back out there. And it's great. Everybody picks each other up. We have a, a, a really fun time with, with each other, and we've got a good group of young guys and veteran guys that, that truly get along, and there's no, there's no animosity in there at all. Well, that's a great point. I'm, of course, I'm up in the suites with about 70 alumni from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, and we all get it. We, we've been on teams where that had to happen. I mean, I was sitting next to Andrew Jones. It happened to him. There's, there's plenty of us that have made a bonehead mistake because you're 25. In his case, he's 21, you know, and, and you just do things that he the moment. You don't, you know, it's not like you set out the plan to be, to do something stupid. Just sometimes it happens. But the best thing that can happen is for you to be disciplined for it and then have, like you said, the teammates there to encourage you to say, hey, we've all done something dumb. Let's learn from it and move on. And, and I know those guys up there felt the same way and they knew it needed to be done, even though you're kind of like, oh, gosh, you know, yeah, I hate absolutely. that. But hey, it's just part of part of growing up and, and being a professional. That's it. We hold each other accountable, and that and that's one of those moments that'll you know it's not a, a defining moment of our of our team, but it's one of those moments where you're like, hey, these guys lean on each other, and they expect you know they expect hustle, and they expect you to push, and and if you discipline you know what's uh, who's arguably your best player, it shows the rest of everybody, hey, you got to be you got to bring it every day. That's right. Yeah, there's too much of that. The worst thing you can do for chemistry on the team is not do it to your best player. Exactly. Or one of your top players, and then everybody's like, oh, you know, here we go, right? <laughs> yeah, you can't, have, you can't have a double standard. No. You can't treat your superstars no. like this and then treat, you know, your 25th not that man. Not anybody expected Snip to be that way because we know better. Correct. But, but let's talk about you. Um, you know, we, we don't have you for a long time, but I'd love to know, and I'm sure Ricky – as we've talked before, before about pitching, tell us what your routine is. How do you how do you come to the ballpark? I know the mentality of a of the blue collar. I get to work. I'm an everyday player. That's great. I love that too. But tell us what you do to start preparing mentally around four o'clock, five o'clock as you stretch. You said you're going out to stretch today. What do you do because you may not be pitching until ten o'clock? Yeah. So my day usually I get here around two o'clock for a seven o'clock game. And as soon as the lineups are posted, looking at the lefties, I'm like, all right, what spot in that lineup, you know, if it's the Phillies we're facing, it's Harper usually in the one, two, three, four hole. Um, looking, if we're going to New York, I'm looking for McNeil and Conforto and Dom Smith if he's in there. That kind of, I figure out what, what part of the lineup I'm going to be attacking. I make sure I'm prepared knowing their tendencies, knowing where to attack them, knowing I feel comfortable you know, with the pitches I'm going to be throwing. And then that translates to making sure I'm, you know, I'm 35, I'll be 36 in a couple of weeks, making sure my body's physically ready. So it's hot tubs, stretching, rolling out, you know, doing some yoga. And then uh, once the game starts, you know, I like to start stretching in the fourth inning. I play catch with the outfielder every fifth inning, and that really starts my routine. And so I start to lock it in from then on. And, And you usually see me, you know, I'm one of the few players that gets out of, we have like an air-conditioned spot in that bullpen. 
you know, the fourth, fifth inning, unless it's a scorching hot day game, you know, I'm out there watching the game. It's just a different perspective. I like to see, feel the atmosphere, feel the fans, uh, and I get locked in from the third on usually. That's good. Has, has Nick, Nick Markakis has been spending some time out there in the bullpen. Has yeah. he said, does he talk much when he's out there? Is he just, he's just kind of hanging out watching? He's the not game? a huge talker to begin that. with. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> I'm but surprised. He, uh, <laughs> he, he, he noticed it's the best seat in the house. I mean, that, that little perch there we have in that right center field, it's the best place to catch a game. You know, I could talk to the players. I, you know, I feel like I helped Ender Enciarte out a few times, telling him he's got room on the track. You know, it's just a beautiful place to catch a ball game. And, and Nick's, you know, unfortunately on the, the injured list and he's just walking around experiencing, you know, different parts of it. And so it's always nice to have him down there. You get to talk hitting and pitching with a position player. It's it's a blessing. Plus, you know, he's, well, he's a good one. He's one of the best. Yeah. yeah, he'd be a great one. So when you came over after the season started, you were supposed to you thought you're going to be in Oakland and you've got a young family. I know that moving a young family at any time is not easy. Moving in season when you thought you were going to be one place on the other side of the country, that's especially hard. But does it help a little bit when you know? Okay, I'm going to a team that's that's contending. Does that make it a little bit easier to deal with? Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. You know, that's that's one of the lu- uh, luxuries of of being a lefty reliever or just a reliever in general. A team that usually wants me on their squad is either contending uh, or looking for a trade deadline to to swing them to a contender. And so they're only going to pay me, you know, um, my salary if they if they think they're going to win. And so I, I I've been blessed to be a part of mostly you know competitive teams you know after my first few years in Oakland when we were you know uh, rough and tumble kind of team yeah. right. I wanted to ask you <clears throat> about the strike zone I noticed that you know when I've talked to guys about and I'll show you just the visual I kind of used when when I was playing the strike zone was like this yeah and now it's like that and they you know for a guy like you and me I don't want that pitch up there <laughs> because, I feel you. And, and a lot of guys are learning that they can't they think they can throw that pitch but that's a ball and that's a home run you know and that is a very small piece of um, real estate that you're going to try to hit on a on a consistent basis it's not easy yeah so I know that there's you know the umpires used to be unique in in who they were so one guy would give you a little bit more of this and nothing of this or he would give you a little bit more of that nothing of that he'd go a little bit below the knee but he'd never go above the waist and now they're calling this pitch, but they won't give you that. And so, so sometimes, sometimes, yeah. So the uniqueness is <laughs> yeah. inconsistency. But where there used to be a unique, and of course, you always had the bad umpires. But um, but I think the Major League Baseball is so far in their head that that it's like to me when I watch every hitter can be as patient as possible because none of the close calls are going by way of the pitcher. It's the benefit, like. If the, if the hitter decides not to swing, the benefit goes to them that it wasn't a strike. And even if it's right on the border or black or whatever. But anyway, I just love to know your perspective on that because there's been a serious evolution in a short period of time compared to when you started your career. Absolutely. So we talked about preparation. That was one of the things that I used to prepare. It's like, all right, this umpire gives you a little bit on the inside portion. Um, he's a little bit tighter on the outside to a righty, that kind of thing. And now I don't really focus on that. I watch it in-game. And so I see what's going on on the field. I'm like, he's a little tight here or there. But I mostly rely on my catcher to understand that. Um, now, like another evolution, you talked about the strike zone, but it's the, the hitter's approach. So a lot of hitters are trying to hit a home run with every swing. And for me, for a guy that works off of you know, being able to locate your pitches, it's, it's advantageous for me because if a guy tries to hit a home run, I know all I have to do is execute. If I put my pitch where I want it in the right spot, odds are I'm going to come out ahead. And so that's kind of one of the evolutions. That's why strikeouts are up, home runs are up, because if you do make a mistake, it's a home run. Uh, whereas before, if you make a mistake, you might get a foul ball, they might fight it, you know, they'll put the ball in play with two strikes, that kind of thing, where with two strikes, the approach is the same. So I don't worry about the, the expanded this way. I worry about making sure the hitter thinks it might be a strike or something that they can hit and then, you know, let them chase. 
That's good. That's a good point right there. Well, Jerry, we thank you so much for your time. So, and the last question from me. Yeah. Okay. Um, so no trade, de- tra- trade deadline, uh, the team makes a few moves, adds to the bullpen. I would think that's got to be a little bittersweet because you know some guys are now going to be sent out or sit down. But is it more of a, a good feeling to know that they're they're adding to the team and trying to, to help you? I mean, I, bittersweet, but still overall a good good feeling in the bullpen. Absolutely, I, I, I tell you, those guys that are that, that got moved down, and I was a, I I was on the block for that too. I could have easily you know been one of the guys that got moved away, but as a as a player. You want your team to want to win, and bringing those three guys into the bullpen only makes your team better. And so all those guys are, you know, they're not excited to be in AAA, but they understand, and, and they, they'll get their, their chance to come back. Um, anything to make the team better. And this truly is one of those teams where the guys, they weren't happy to go down, but they understand. They understand that this team's trying to win the World Series. They want to be a part of it, and they're happy that the front office wants to win a World Series too. And so, like you said, bittersweet, but ultimately whatever makes the team better. Well, again, we do appreciate you being on. I know that you're, you seem to be a good teammate Um, You've got a great perspective on it. I'm sure it's great for these young guys like Luke Jackson, who we've had on here. Some of the other guys, they need good veteran leadership. I was very blessed to have some guys like Steve Bedrosian and Jay Howell and stuff that that were there for me. And I know it's real important for them because what I've noticed with a lot of these guys is we're getting them to the big leagues a lot quicker and they're trying to learn on the job whereas a lot of us learned in the minor leagues before we ever came up. And so I know it's, it's probably Alex is thrilled that you're here in SNIT because they need that kind of calming influence in the bullpen. I was glad to see the veterans that came over in the trade because that was another thing that would benefit some of these young guys. So we appreciate you being on, and, and uh, we'll put in a good word, Alex, because we'd love to have you back. Hey, thank year. you. I appreciate <laughs> that. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me on, yeah. guys. All right. Thanks, Jay.